These are really great for getting into all of those curves and crevices. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today's video is super exciting because I'm going to be showing you all of the equipment that I bought when I initially started soap making and this type of video is highly requested because I know a lot of you guys are wanting to jump in and do this and are not sure what exactly they need. Nobody wants to be spending money on a bunch of ingredients or equipment that at the end of the day they didn't even use. Hopefully you guys will find this video interesting. If you're new here, hello my name is Jerrica and I am the owner and creator of quench and on this channel i talk all about my soap and bath bomb business and if that is something that you're interested in please subscribe i guarantee you you will learn something on this channel and now without further ado let's get into it so if you're wanting to make soap you absolutely have to get yourself one of these and what this is, is a stick blender. And a stick blender is the tool that most soap makers use to emulsify and blend your lye solution with your oils. The reason why this is mandatory is because it really shortens the amount of time it takes to get those two elements to come together and bind. If you don't have this and you're just using a whisk, I have heard that you will get soap eventually, but it will take you a very, very long time. And who has the time for that, right? So the good news is about these tools is that you can buy them fairly cheaply. I think this one cost me about $40 from Canadian Tire. If you're from Canada, you can get it from there, but you can literally get these guys anywhere. Amazon is a really great resource for that. So I will try to find a link to it in Amazon and that will all be listed in the description below. And this particular guy, I bought this when I first started soap making and he has lasted me all of these years, these three years that I've been doing this. <laughs> so I definitely recommend Oster as a brand but I know that a lot of soap makers use KitchenAid and KitchenAid seems to be the brand that most soap makers use. So Oster or KitchenAid, if you stick with those brands, I think you're safe. The next thing you're going to need are bowls or pitchers that you are gonna wanna mix the lye and oils up in and then later on your colorants like your mica and oxides. And the best thing for that are these plastic bowls here. And what you're looking for is the plastic bowls that have a recycling triangle at the bottom that has, it's really hard to see it on this one, but you're looking for either a two or a five. And those numbers tell you that that plastic is strong enough to endure corrosive chemicals like lye. And it really makes it safe to use these vessels as containers for mixing your soap into. Once you get to a stage where you're blending together larger and larger batches of soap, these guys are gonna start to be too small. So what I recommend to you guys is to keep a lot of the containers that you get when you order your supplies. For me, I like using the containers that coconut oil comes in, um, the container that the actual lye comes in. I, I saved that tail and I use that to mix my lye water. You don't have to spend too much for any of that stuff and a few tools I was able to even get at the dollar store so this kind of stuff is super cheap you definitely need I would say at least to start three of these and then maybe a plastic bucket or container um, once you start to get into the bigger batches of soap the next super important tool that you want to invest in when you're getting into this hobby are spatulas and I like these different sizes I like these small ones for scraping stuff out of the smaller beakers and I like bigger ones for the bigger pails of soap that I scrape scrape stuff out of. And I got this guy from Ikea. Ikea sells kitchen utensils super, super cheaply. I have used this for three years and it still looks brand new and hasn't broken at all. But having different sizes is good so that you're able to reach for the right tool for the job. But even if you just had this guy, it should be more than okay. <laughs> Another thing I should mention is that when you're working with oils and eventually soap, once you make the lye solution to your oils, you wanna get every last bit of oil and soap off of your containers so that you are wasting the least amount of soap as possible. And these spatulas are an awesome way to get as much of that scraped off of these surfaces as you can. And when you're working with these types of containers where it's kind of like a rounded bottom, these are really great for getting into all of those curves and crevices. So definitely recommend spatulas like this for when you're making soap. Another super important tool that you wanna invest in is your mold. And you don't have to actually buy a mold like this. You can make soap in literally anything, in a cardboard box, in a PVC pipe, as long as it contains that soap and you're able to get that soap out, 
it's good to go. But when you first start out and you wanna keep things simple, this mold from Crafter's Choice is fantastic. I made all of my first batches in this. And this is a two pound mold. And the mold number is 1501. This is a really great starter mold. I was able to make about eight bars of soap using this guy. So it's the perfect soap mold to start off with. The one thing I will say, it's kind of difficult to pop soap out of this. So that's one thing you need to think about if you're gonna be making soap in this. Otherwise, I loved using this and it was completely fine. Another must have when you are starting to make soap is a temperature gun. And this one is a master craft. I believe I got this from Amazon, if it could focus, there you go. And what this does, this infrared thermometer measures the temperature of your lye water and your oils. And why that's important is because you don't want to be soaping too hot and you also don't want to be soaping too cold. So keeping track of your lye water solution is super important. And I will say that I used to start off measuring the temperature of my oils. I no longer do that. I found that it didn't really matter what the temperature of my oils were. I only now keep track of the temperature of my lye water solution. And for my lye water solution, I like to soap at just below 110. I don't really like to go to room temperature, although I have gone to room temperature and I've been fine doing that. This is the way you keep track of how hot your lye water solution is. I've had this from the beginning. It's kind of dirty and definitely well used, but I love it. Invest in a good one. This one reads in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's another feature that I recommend you guys look for when you're buying one of these because it's good to keep track of both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then there's the safety gear. I didn't start off making soap using these guys. I had um, an inexpensive eye covering that you can get at Home Hardware or Home Depot. And that was significant enough for me to get protection over my eyes. I've upgraded to these guys because I really like how it covers up the sides and the underneath. So my eyes are super duper protected, but you definitely don't need something this intense. But eye protection is super important because of the fact that lye is corrosive and you don't want that on your skin. It burns so imagine what that will do to your eyeballs. So make sure when you're soaping, have proper eye covering. Again, doesn't have to be as serious as this guy, but as long as you have some sort of safety glasses, you should be good. And some sort of covering for your mouth when you're mixing your lye water. When you're mixing your lye with your water, once you do that, the fumes that come from that are so irritating. It just, it's not really great to be inhaling that kind of stuff because A, it's uncomfortable and B, who knows what that kind of stuff is doing to your lungs. So try to protect yourself as much as possible from inhaling that kind of stuff. Again, you don't need to go as intense as this. Simple painter's mask might help. Make sure that you are soaping safely because it's just no fun when you get hurt, obviously, and highly recommend you do what you can to protect yourself. And you also definitely want to use gloves to protect your hands. I use these every time I soap because if you get just a little bit of soap batter on your skin, it will start to burn. It's really, really painful. I've had that happen because these gloves don't exactly cover my entire hand. Sometimes I have a bit of wrist showing and when I get soap on my wrist, burns and stings, it's so unpleasant. So you definitely want to protect your hands as well by using nitrile gloves, get the powder free kind and, and it's always helpful to have them be the right size. I've been finding lately that these are hard to buy in my size. I need a, a small glove so I have them in these one size fit all gloves and it's way too big for me, but I'd rather wear oversized gloves that help protect my hands than not have them at all. So definitely invest in some gloves as well. The next thing you're going to need are measuring spoons. Nothing is more annoying than making a batch of soap and forgetting just how much mica you used. And then you're suddenly unable to recreate that same soap. So I really like these teaspoons for measuring out mica. And I also like these teaspoons for measuring out my skin loving extras, like all my exfoliants, and clays, lovely things that I add to my soap. I wanna make sure that I'm using the same amount each time, so that's why I like using teaspoons for that. And I like the metal kinds too, because they're easy to clean and they're super durable. And related to teaspoons, you want some sort of measuring cup that you will be using to scoop out your lye. And remember that you wanna be using tools that you're not using for baking and cooking and any of that stuff. You really wanna buy a separate set of tools and utensils that you're using solely for making your product 
products that are separate from everything you use to cook. And now the last important piece of equipment that you will need when you are making soap is a good scale. And this is the KD 800 or 8000, I forget. I have a link down below, but this is a really great scale that is kind of pricey. I think I spent around $80 on it, but it's totally worth it if you're doing soaping as a career and as a business. But when you're first starting out, you don't really need something as heavy duty as this. What I use in the beginning, and I can't find right now. I thought that I had it somewhere. Wait, let me see. I found it. What I was using at the beginning was a food scale like this, and I think this is the Star Frit. Oh no, this is Taylor brand. And these are super cheap. I think I got this at Canadian Tire, but you can get food scales anywhere. Amazon has a ton of them, and these are super inexpensive, and they're totally not as accurate as this guy. But when you're first starting out, you don't really need to be extremely, extremely to the gram, to the exact gram accurate. So I think food scales when you're first starting out are completely fine, and I been able to make lots and lots of soap just using a scale like this one. So when it comes to the ingredients of the soap itself, you only really need two things. One is the sodium hydroxide and the second thing are oils. And those are literally the only things you need to make soap. There are recipes out there that are 100% coconut oil, 100% olive oil. So you can go as super simple as that. But there are so many other recipes out there that include different types of oils that you can play around with. And all of these oils you can literally get at your local grocery store. Olive oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, avocado oil, all of those are available at your store. Even casserole, I think, is available at your local grocery store. But when it comes to lye, that might be trickier. I know that they do sell lye at Home Depot or Home Hardware. You can definitely start off there. I know that even Amazon sells lye, but if you are wanting to start soaping as a hobby, I highly recommend you get familiar with a soap supplier. In the States, there's quite a few, but in Canada, I like to use Windy Point, I like to use New Directions Aromatics, I like to use Candora Soap Supplies, and all of those places will typically have sodium hydroxide available. They will have skin safe fragrance oils available. They will have clays available, all the things that you will need in order to get you going on your soap making journey. So that is it. Those are all of the tools that I believe you need in order to get started on making soap. And once you have all of those tools, then you can start adding in other things. The more you get comfortable with soaping as a hobby and eventually down the road, a business. And it's really not that much. I think I heard Katie Carson say in one of her Q and A's, that she only spent around $500 to get her soap hobby going. And honestly, that is peanuts compared to the other types of industries that those business owners have to invest in to get that business going. So the barrier to entry is quite low. And even if you don't make it into a full-fledged business, you have this amazing hobby that you can use to gift your beautiful products to your friends and family. And I personally think it's always great to have a skill like soap making. It teaches you so much. I'm a huge fan of learning new skills, so why not? <laughs> Again, I have everything that I mentioned in this video listed in the description below. You can go to any store, literally any store, and find all of these things. They're literally everyday household items. There's nothing fancy when you first get started into making soap. So I definitely hope that you guys learn something new and I hope that for those of you who are just wanting to get your feet wet, I got you excited about starting this journey. Definitely get those tools, get started, get soaping, and if you want simple recipes, Soap Queen TV has a bunch of them for beginners. Check her out and her channel. And if you're wondering how to formulate your first soap recipe, I do have a video on that which I will link up here. So until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome and keep having an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.